Uh, so yeah, my name is Tom Stellard. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. Uh, I'm responsible for maintaining the LVM toolchain for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, as well as for the Fedora Linux distribution. Um, so today I'm going to talk about how to do standalone builds of the LVM subprojects. Uh, and so before I get into a lot of the details, I just want to give a quick example of exactly what I mean by standalone builds. So with most LVM projects, there are two ways to build them. Um, so the first way is to overlay uh, the projects onto the LVM source tree and build everything together. So you end up with a source tree that looks something like this. And then you just use a single CMake invocation to configure and then build all the projects. And so this is the way that is documented in the Getting Started Guide. This is how the BuildBots build the projects. This is uh, really the most common way that people start out um, interacting with LVM. So what I'm going to talk about today is how to use a different method to build the projects, uh, which I call standalone builds. Uh, so with standalone builds, you check out the source and then configure and build each project separately. So you might end up with a source tree that looks something like this, a little bit more flat. And then when you do your configure and build, you're doing a separate invocation in each uh, subdirectory. Um, there's no need to overlay with LVM source. You can just uh, interact with each project um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So really, the reason I wanted to talk about standalone builds today is that we are using these in Fedora to get some significant savings in build times, uh, as well as it also helps to reduce the resource usage on some of our builders. Um, it's also helped me personally improve some of my own development processes. Uh, so for example, uh, if I'm working on issues for a uh, stable release, if I need to re reproduce a bug in one of the subprojects like Clang or LLD, uh, I can just install LLVM from my package manager, fetch the source for the project I need, just build only that project, um, and I can get off and start debugging uh, fairly quickly. Another way this helps is if I'm working on a bug in LLVM, I just need to build LLVM. I don't have to worry about copying Clang out of the LLVM tree, or copying LLD out of the LLVM tree to get um, faster build times. I'm just already set up to go and just to build LLVM all on its own. Now besides just for helping developers, I think standalone builds are also very useful on CI systems um, because it allows you to, when you get a change in, uh, only build the subproject that actually changed. So for example, if you can reuse um, the previous good LLVM build and then when you get a, a change coming in from LLD, or Clang or whatever, you can just build that project against um, the previous known good version of LLVM. Um, so you can uh, get some savings there. And then uh, for the Fedora build, so one of the, the biggest advantages for us of doing the standalone builds of just how quickly we can build, test, and deploy fixes uh, to the individual subprojects. So I'll talk about this a little bit more in detail, but I just want to give people a quick sort of introduction to the Fedora packaging process in case people aren't really familiar with uh, how we package things for Fedora. So on Fedora, there are things, the uh, software is packaged into what we call RPMs. So there are two different kinds of RPMs. There's source RPMs and binary RPMs. Uh, so source RPMs are essentially just source tarballs from upstream projects. Uh, and this is the input into our build system. Um, and then binary RPMs are the output. Um, so one source RPM can be used to generate one or more binary RPMs. Um, so for example, here, uh, when we take our LLVM source RPM, we feed it into the build system, and we get out uh, several different um, binary RPMs, each with um, different contents. So the LLVM package contains the tools like LLC and opt. Uh, we have the LLVM devel, which has the header files, LLVM libs, which has the libraries. Um, and then it looks kind of like this for each subproject. So for LLD, for example, same process, we get out a little bit different um, RPMs at the end. Okay, so as I mentioned before, one of the main advantages of using the standalone builds is just how quickly we can build and, text, uh, we can build and test fixes. Um, so I put up a quick chart of the build times for each subproject um, for the most recent builds uh, in our Fedora build system. Um, and I also put on the uh, right-hand side just the sum total of, of all the builds. Um, now, if, if I were to uh, submit these builds to the um, build system uh, in a single source fashion, so instead of splitting them up um, in standalone builds, if I were to do a unified build, I think the build time would probably be slightly less, um, just because there's a lot of overhead in our build system um, for building the individual packages. Because every time you submit a build, it has to reinstall the dependencies and everything like that. So um, even though uh, we like standalone builds, 
um, it's not the fastest way to build everything together if you just need to do um, sort of a, a quick rebuild because there is some overhead from the individual projects. Um, but for us, that's not a major use case. We're really more concerned about um, being able to get a fix into a specific subproject, rebuild that subproject, um, and just be able to deploy it very quickly. So if you take a look, for example, um, if we needed to fix LOD, for, for example, it only takes us five minutes to get a fix for LOD. Okay, we don't have to wait 200 minutes to rebuild all, all the projects. We can get it in really quickly, um, and this is uh, a good benefit for us. Um, and the other reason we like uh, splitting them up like this is because um, actually our build systems are limited in disk space, so they only have about 130 gigabytes. Um, and we try to build everything together, we actually run out of disk space. Um, so it's not even really feasible for us to do it. So this uh, gives us a nice way to um, sort of fit our builds in the existing build system. One of the other kind of neat things you can do with a standalone builds also is you can pipeline your builds. So um, instead of just uh, building one project at a time, you can sort of make a dependency tree like this um, and build different projects in parallel. Um, so uh, when we do this uh, in Fedora, we can get a little bit of a speed up on the build time. Um, it's not, not a lot. Um, I think part of the reason for this is um, some of the projects that are on the critical path, like Clang and LLVM, uh, we're running uh, lots of tests for those in the build system, whereas the other projects we aren't. So once we get into more testing with the other projects, it will increase their build time, um, and we'll see a, a bigger speed up from be, um, using this pipeline approach. Um, but as I mentioned before, uh, for us, this is, building everything at once is kind of uh, something we don't really do a lot. Um, like I said, we're really more interested in getting a fix, single fix in uh, and getting a rebuild quickly um, in order to get that out to users or customers. All right, so now let's just start uh, looking at exactly how we can do the standalone builds. So I'm just gonna walk through a little bit of example of doing the standalone builds for Clang. Um, and this kind of shows some of the different LVM kernels that help to make this work. So the first step of doing a standalone build of any project is you have to build and install LVM. Uh, so for this example, we're just gonna use a, a simple CMake invocation, nothing really fancy. Um, so the LVM build, LVM uh, dialib option um, tells you to build the single uh, shared object uh, called libLVM.so, uh, and then the LVM link, LVM dialib, um, causes all the tools that you build to link against that shared object instead of the static libraries. All right. So once we've done our LLVM build, uh, then we can get started building Clang. Um, so actually for standalone builds, we don't really need any uh, extra configurations here. We can just use the default configuration for Clang um, and it will work for us. So usually after I've done a build, um, I like to do some simple sanity checks. So the first thing I just do is I ask Clang to print its version. Um, basically what this does is just test that all the linking uh, happened correctly and there's no um, uh, mix between shared and static objects or duplicated symbols or anything like that that might cause a crash. So I usually do that um, and then I just uh, try to compile a simple program just to make sure um, more of the functionality is working. So just with a simple configuration, it uh, passes all of our sanity checks. Um, so uh, we're looking in pretty good shape. Um, another thing, um, so if you remember when we configured LVM, uh, we use the option to enable the dynamic linking of the tools. Um, so if we look at the shared object dependencies for Clang, we can see that Clang is actually uh, linking against libLLVM.so. And so remember, so the option for specifying this, we use this when configuring Clang, or I'm sorry, we use this when configuring LLVM, but when we configured Clang, we did not pass this option at all. Um, so Clang just inherited it from the LLVM build. All right, so how, how does this work? So what's going on behind the scenes that makes this all work so easily? Um, so what happens is when you configure Clang, uh, it searches your system for the LLVM config program, um, and it uses LLVM config to find paths to the various uh, parts of the LLVM install on your system. Uh, it also initializes CMake variables with some of these paths. So for example, uh, there's the LLVM tools binary directory, which is a path to tools like LC, opt, et cetera. Um, the LVM library directory, LVM may include directory for the includes. Um, there's also the LVM main source directory, which is the path to the LVM source tree. Um, and we'll go into a little bit more about how this is used when we start talking about lit testing. Um, and then the other path, which is kind of important, is uh, the LVM CMake path. So this is used to find the location of LVM config.cmake, um, which ends up getting included um, in Clang's uh, CMake lists file. 
um, when Clang is configured. So the lvmconfig.cmake file is a pretty important file in this process. Uh, it defines all the variables that were used when you're configuring LVM, so that way Clang knows um, and can look at what, how you um, configured LVM so it can configure itself um, in the same way or at least in a way that's compatible. So the LVM config.cmake file, so this is just basically generated by taking variables to defined in your CMake list file um, that's in the CMake modules directory um, and then having CMake substitute them into the uh, template file uh, which is called LVM config.cmake.in uh, and then as a result you get LVM config, or I'm sorry, you get LVM config.cmake uh, which ends up getting installed in your system uh, that any application like, like Clang can use. So here's just a little bit of a snippet from the template file to demonstrate how this works. Um, so most of the lines in the file look like this second line here where you're basically just simply setting uh, the value of a variable. Um, the LVM config link LVM dialib line though is just slightly different. Um, and in fact, if you notice the variable name is a little bit different from the one that we passed to LVM. Um, so let's take a look at the CMake list file just to see uh, what's going on here. Um, so here, if we look at uh, this little snippet from that file, we can see that the substitution variable LVM config, LVM link dialib, uh, it's only set when we have um, explicitly specified an, a value for the LVM link, LVM dialib option. So what this does by doing it this way is it allows subprojects to choose for themselves whether they want to dynamically link against uh, liblvm.so. So even if uh, the LVM build decides to do it or decides to not do it, um, you're able to override it in Clang, um, which is, can be pretty useful. And then this is just a picture of once you've run all these uh, things through uh, CMake, this is the output you get that in the file that ends up getting installed on your system. All right, so we've done the builds now, so now we want to go back and try and run lit to make sure that um, We've done everything correctly in all the test paths. So if we just do a simple ninja check though, uh, we end up getting an error. So we can't find the um, build target. So if we just look quickly at the available uh, check targets that are generated by ninja, um, there's actually no make check, but there's a couple other ones that uh, look helpful. So there's check all and check clang. Um, and these are pretty much the same. The only difference is check all if you're using the clang tools extra uh, repository uh, will run those tests as well, um, whereas check Clang just runs only the, the Clang tests. So now we found the correct um, check target that we want to use, we can run it, uh, but we still get an error. So this time lit is unable to find file check. So what's going on here? Well, the problem here is that file check along with other utilities that are used for testing like not or count, um, these actually don't get installed by default um, in LVM. So we have to go back to our LVM build, um, add this extra option uh, to enable installing the utilities. Uh, we reconfigure LLVM, we build it, install it, um, and then the next time we run uh, Ninja Check All for Clang, uh, everything works as expected. All right, so as far as the lit testing, so what's going on behind the scenes to make this work? So the, the core of this is that LVM config, as I mentioned before, uh, CMake uses it to find the path to the LVM source tree um, and exactly where it was when you built LVM. So once it has this directory, um, it looks in it for uh, the LVM lit script. Uh, it also looks for the Google test sources um, and it uses uh, the things that it finds there to run the test. So what we've done so far works, um, but as I mentioned, running the lit test requires having the LVM source code not only available on your system, but also in the exact same path uh, as it was when it was built. So this can be an issue on uh, distributions like Fedora where um, LVM config reports the source directly not only as a path that may not exist, but one that the user can't even create. So the, using the default here isn't really gonna work for us if we don't have access to the source. Um, so there are some alternative things we can do if we want to run the lit test. Um, so we can actually tell Clang to use a standalone build of lit. Um, there is a downside to, to using standalone builds, um, and it, that is that the Google test-based unit tests, uh, those actually require having the source tree. So 
If you're using a standalone lit and you don't have the source tree available, the Google test unit test will actually get skipped and won't, won't even be built. So that is one downside of using the standalone build of lit uh, to do your testing. So where do we get the standalone build from lit, of lit from? Um, so we actually do have a couple options. Um, so we can install it directly, directly from the LVM source tree. Uh, we can also uh, use a Python package manager uh, to download it from uh, pypi.org. Um, I actually upload, I actually co-maintain that package. So whenever there's an LVM release, I upload it there. Um, so that should be um, up to date um, for anyone to use that wants to use it. So now that we have um, lit installed on our system and we can try using this, the system lit instead of the one that was in the source tree. Um, so if we want to do that, we just need to add one extra option to tell LVM where to find the lit. Uh, we can configure it um, and then uh, make check will this time use the uh, standalone build of lit that's installed on our system. So we don't really have a lot of time to go in really into depth into all the different sort of advanced configurations you can use to configure Clang. Um, but if you're interested, just go briefly over some of the more advanced configuration options. Um, so I mentioned all these variables before and how uh, they usually get populated um, by LVM config output. Um, but you can actually override these if you want. Um, so one reason you might want to do this was, if, for example, if you wanted to um, Get the Google test the unit test working. You could install the LVM source somewhere in your system, and then you could override the default um, with uh, one of these variables. And then also, as um, you saw in the um, CMake example, when we um, started using external lit, that variable is is available not only for Clang but for every subproject. So any subproject that you want to build. We want to use an external lit. Um, you can just use, configure it in the same way that we configured uh, Clang in our earlier example. So another important piece of the, the CMake code that makes all this work are the CMake helpers that live in the LVM tree. So these helpers are used uh, to standardize the configuration across all the subprojects. So there's helpers for things like uh, creating a library target or creating an executable target or adding a lit target. Um, and then sometimes sub target, or, or, I'm sorry, sometimes sub projects will wrap these helpers with their own helpers. So you won't see a lot of these used directly, but you might see something um, in Clang, for example, like add Clang library that, that wraps um, these core helpers. So uh, going back to the LVM link, LVM dialog option we used when we were configuring LVM. Um, if we just want to use that sort of as an um, example to take a look at some of, of how some of these um, helper functions work, um, we'll just take a look at the add LVM executable function. Um, so th this is located in uh, the CMake modules directory of the LVM tree. Um, so basically what this does is if you have an executable, you want to um, have CMake set up all the, the correct uh, linker arguments and all that other stuff, uh, you can use this helper for that. Um, so you can see here that in that function, um, it, it checks if we've configured with the link dialog option, um, and if it uh, if it sees it, then it um, passes the use shared option to LVM config, which is what's responsible for setting up all the linker flags um, and things like that. Um, and then the other thing you'll notice here is there's actually a, a separate argument uh, where you can override the value of uh, LVM link uh, dialog if you want to. Um, so if you had a tool that you wanted to force um, static linking on, you can actually do that um, with a simple parameter. Um, and we do have an example of this in the tree. So there's an add LVM utility macro, uh, which is used for things like file check, not, and count. Um, and this actually uses that option to force uh, static linking uh, for all those tools. So that's... Um, just basically look at some of the um, LVM internals that kind of help make this work. Um, I could probably have a much longer talk and go into more depth, but I just wanted to kind of give people an idea of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, I think it's useful for when you run into problems to kind of know where to look. So usually when I run into problems, um, I start with looking at the um, LVM config.cmake file and just to see if that looks like how I expect. And then uh, sometimes I start digging around into those helpers to see if maybe there's um, an option there that um, isn't 
tuned correctly for standalone builds. So hopefully that will that'll be useful to some people. Um, so as far as what's uh, currently supported, so um, basically all the projects that are enabled uh, by default in the release scripts can be built standalone, um, except for Clang Tools Extra. This still requires that you overlay it into the Clang tree. Um, Make check, however, really isn't supported that well for standalone builds, so only Clang and LLD really support this. Um, the other projects, you will get varying degrees of success depending on how you configure them, um, but Clang and LLD should work pretty well right out of the box. Um, so some future areas for improvement. Um, so one of the main things I kind of want to change about this process is uh, stop using LLVM config to detect the LLVM install and instead solely rely on the CMake files. Um, LVM config actually isn't accurate if you um, use kind of a non-standard installation uh, because it infers uh, the path of the include files, the libraries, based on its own directory where it's installed. So uh, if you install the libraries off to some different prefix or something like that, it's not going to be able to find them. Um, so I, I would really like to get the projects um, all using the CMake files directly because um, it has... Uh, all accurate information. Um, other things I wanted to, to try and do are um, just refactor some of the code. If, if you actually look in the CMake code across the different subprojects, you'll see that there's a lot of duplicated code that I think we can clean up um, and stick into some of those helpers, um, which I think would be good. And then also, um, I think it would be great if we could get um, improved support for MakeCheck. Um, and then as far as uh, external projects, so you can use these techniques in your own code base. Um, so all the CMake helper functions that I mentioned, they get installed on your system. So if you want to build something that's based on LLVM, you can use all these same techniques um, that the um, official LLVM subprojects are using uh, to build your own project. Um, and there's actually an example uh, in the documentation for how to set up a CMake file um, for a derived, um, a derived project if you want to take a look. All right, so that's pretty much all I have on the topic. Uh, so I hope this is something that you'll find useful. Uh, thanks for listening. Do we have any questions? Let's, uh, since we're recording, let's please uh, ask questions through the mic. Uh, I want to ask what triggers the complete build? Like when you build the RPMs, what triggers the complete build? Uh, you mean like in Fedora or like what? Yeah, like uh, basically in anything, what do you do? Right. Yeah. So, so in Fedora, it's all manual. So we're doing that all manually right now. So we trigger, if I want to build LVM, I just manually submit the build and, and it builds. Thanks for the talk. Uh, two questions. One, you showed that Clang dynamic links to libllvm.so. Uh, when we tried that, that was like 20% or 30% slower than statically linking to libllvm. Is that something you've seen? Uh, yeah. So yeah, that is one of the downsides of doing it that way. Um, you know, that's for the for Fedora. The reason we do it that way um, is because it's easier just to to get a bug fix in. We don't have to rebuild Clang. So yeah, there's definitely a trade off there, and it's something we've actually talked about. Um, maybe trying to move to a statically link just for Clang, just for some of those reasons. But yeah, that's, that's definitely an issue that we've seen. And second question, you said one advantage of your setups that if you get an LD uh, patch that rebuilding only takes five minutes, does that mean that you always do full builds? Because normally if you do an incremental build with just an LD check, that's uh, like way faster than five minutes. Right, so. yeah. So in, in the Fedora and also in, in, you may have this in your CI system, um, we don't do incremental builds. Every build we do is a, is a clean build from scratch. That just policy, it helps being able to reproduce the builds. Um, so if, I know the, some of the build bots do the incremental builds, and sometimes you'll see if someone commits like a CMake change or something, it, it won't rebuild and it needs manual intervention. So yeah, so I mean, definitely a technique if you want to speed up um, doing a unified build, doing the kind of dirty tree builds um, is definitely an option for that. But that's something that's against our policy. We, we need to do clean builds every time to be able to reproduce them. Oh, thank you. It's a very, very useful and practical talk. Um, I've been sort of taking notes and trying to track stuff as you go through. Have you got this written down in an application note or something on the Fedora or Red Hat websites that we can look at? Um, 
I don't have it written down, but that's a very good suggestion, so I, I can look at doing that. Um, as always, if you're curious how Fedora does it, all the spec files um, are online, so you can usually find those, and they're pretty easy to understand. It just basically has the you know, CMake invocation in there, so all the options we use are in those files, so you can always peek if you want to get the latest. We do, um, we do a lot of extra options, like enabling documentation and things like that, so it's going to have a lot of extra stuff that you probably don't need, but um, yeah, it's definitely a good, good suggestion. I'll, I'll uh, look into doing that for sure. In the meantime, this, the video of this will be a very useful reference. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Hi. So there's a discussion happening right now about moving to a unified repo model with the migration to GitHub. So mm -hmm. how do you plan to adapt to that, assuming that it does go through? Right. So it really shouldn't change at all the setup um, if you... See if I can go. I can go back to my slide. There it is. So this is the source layout that I'm using for doing the standalone build. So the proposed mono repo will look just like this. Um, so it's still going to be, you're still going to be able to do this, um, even with the new layout. It doesn't really impact um, how the, the projects are built for this, this technique. Any more questions? So I agree about the duplication. Uh, there are a lot of things that seem to have started in LLVM and then, then have been copy-pasted into different sub-projects, and they don't really keep up. And there are some features like, for example, support for remote testing that are only C++ and not elsewhere. Um, but one problem is that most of these projects, like libc++, for example, support building both completely standalone when you don't have LLVM around, right. but also in a mode when you have LLVM around and then you can reuse some of those common functions. So how do you see, what do you see as the best way to start deduplicating some of the common CMake code? Yeah, I mean, so the way we distribute things on Fedora is we actually split out, so as I mentioned before, the de development packages. So we have headers and CMake files in their own package. So that's kind of what my vision is, is that helpers would go into, into that core, um, into core LLVM, um, and then uh, some projects could just include the CMake files if they needed, um, and then do it that way. Um, I know one thing that was mentioned as part of the, the Git um, migration was potentially pulling functionality out of LLVM. So like lib support, for example, maybe that would be in its own top level directly. So that might be another option. Um, but yeah, I think for now the best, the best way to do it is really just to stick everything in, in LLVM that we can. Um, uh, and it, it works pretty well in Fedora because we can split that part of the install out and just have that available. Um, like for libc++ without having to install like all the libraries and everything else that goes with it. Okay, well let's thank our speaker.